All right, welcome everybody to today's event. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Laura, Lauren Wagner, and she's going to uh, do the introductions. So go ahead, Lauren, when you're ready. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our program today. My name is Lauren, and I'm the program coordinator of the Veterans Resource Center at Skyline College. Skyline College is part of the San Mateo County Community College District in the San Francisco Bay Area and is comprised of three colleges, Skyline College, College of San Mateo, and Kenyatta College. Each college has a veteran center and a coordinator, and all three work together to help connect students, faculty, and staff with resources and services for veterans and military-connected individuals. The Skyline College also works very closely with the San Francisco VA, um, and I have my colleague here, Bridget, to introduce herself. Oh, actually, I think Bridget hasn't joined yet, so I'm actually just going to introduce Bridget, and when she jumps on, she can wave hi to all of you all. Um, so Bridget is a licensed clinical social worker with the San Francisco VA Student Veteran Health Program, and it's one of the number of national vital sites across the country. Um, she's been working as a coordinator at SFVA Student Veteran Health Program since 2010. Um, the student Veteran Health Program and National Vital Sites provide assistance to student veterans locally and across the country with enrolling in and navigating VA health care and connecting veterans with college, community, and VA programs and services. They also provide social work, mental health, and care coordination services, um, as well as speaker series presentations for student veterans, trainings about student veteran related issues to fact to faculty and staff at various colleges and universities. The San Francisco VA Student Veteran Health Program has team members in various schools throughout Northern California. She's very proud to be part of San Francisco Health Program as a coordinator and assigned to Skyline College, City College of San Francisco and Golden Gate University. I would also like to introduce um, my colleague, Brian Vargas, who's a manager of the CCSF Veteran Resource Center. Brian joined the Marine Corps straight out of high school and was deployed in the support of Operation Iraqi Freedom in September 2006. On January 17, 2007, while on a three-day mission, Brian was shot in the face and hand by a sniper, causing long-term chronic injuries. He was medically evacuated and spent 30 days receiving treatment at Walter Reed Hospital, after which time he was medically retired from the Marine Corps with a Purple Heart on August 30th, 2009. Since that time, Brian attended UC Berkeley, where he obtained both his bachelor's degree and his master's degree in social work, and has since made it his mission to support his fellow, fellow veterans navigating the complexities of the VA education system and building support systems for veterans and military service after, as they pursue higher education. Oh, hi, Bridget. I'm going to hand it over to you. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Lauren. Having some technical difficulties connecting to the VPN here at City College, so my apologies. Um, so um, thank you, Lauren, for doing the introductions for, um, for myself and also um, for Brian. And um, I just wanted to share that Lauren, Brian, and I are all very passionate about our shared mission across Skyline, CCSF, um, and our San Francisco VA um, Vital Student Veteran Health Program um, in supporting student veterans in higher education. Um, and we are actually very much kind of valuing our collaboration with CalVet and CalTAP um, in putting on a series of webinars on topics of interest to student veterans. Um, we also are very appreciative to our colleagues, including April from the VBA's Veterans Readiness and Employment Program, whose presentation we are looking forward to today. Um, we're also excited that you all have the opportunity to hear about the wonderful resources and opportunities available through CalVet. And we now invite Michael from the CalVet's um, California Transition Assistance Program team <laughs> to begin. Thank you, Michael. All right, thank you, Bridget, for the introduction. Um, again, my name is Michael Cisneros. I'm with the uh, California Transition Assistance Program. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself later on, um, just to give you a quick rundown of what the day is gonna be like. Uh, we're going to hear from April Paganelli. She is uh, from the Oakland 
Oakland regional office of the uh, VA. And she's going to talk to you a little bit about VRE and how to enroll in VRE and the benefits of, of, of joining a program like that. Um, once she's done talking, then you'll hear from Caltap, I'll tell you a little bit about my program and how we work with veterans across the state. And then you'll hear from your local interagency network coordinator or your Bay Area link. Um, tell you a little bit about how they work with veterans as well. Um, once we're done talking, um, we'll have a chance to answer questions. Um, just to let you know, our chat feature is going to be uh, shut down for this event because we will be adding resources to the chat. Uh, my colleague Derek is on uh, this webinar with me today, and he's going to be putting uh, resources that come up throughout the webinar in the chat for you to download. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A uh, feature that's uh, available through Zoom. Um, with that, we could answer the questions either, you know, on, on the fly or we'll hold them in, uh, until the very end when we have the Q&A uh, portion. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on. I want to bring, uh, introduce you guys to April Paganelli. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, she's with the Oakland Regional Office of the uh, VA. Um, and she's going to talk to you a little about the VRNE program. So, April, when you're ready, go ahead. Thank you. I'm not that technical, so I had to look at unmute first. Um, <laughs> hi, Michael, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'd like to say hi to Lauren and Bridget as well. Um, we, we send emails back and forth, but now we get to see what each other looks like. Uh, yeah, so um, so I'm from Veteran Readiness and Employment, and um, it's VRNE for those who, um, who love acronyms. Um, so uh, today I'd like to cover what we do and how we do it and why. Um, so uh, if you have questions, because you will, if they're very personal to just you, then um, you know I can uh, provide my phone number and an email address and you can uh, contact me that way. And I'd love to like, you know, talk to you one-on-one -on -one for those. For the rest of it, if it's something general that we can just answer as a group, then, then that's fine too. We can do that at the end. But I don't want you to feel um, any sort of like, you know, people are listening to, uh, to personal information or whatever. So we'll be able to address those kind of differently. Um, so without further ado, uh, I think next slide, Michael, do you have it? There we go. So, um, where are we? Get rid of that. Okay. Rules for days, VRNE briefing. To provide you with information and facts about Chapter 31. So, there are different chapters, and one of the chapters that we cover is um, Veteran Readiness and Employment, and it is Chapter 31, otherwise known as now Veteran Readiness and Employment. We did change our name. To gain some awareness about Chapter 31 and how we can help you reach your employment goals. So that's important to remember that it's in the title, Veteran Readiness and Employment. So we are not an education program, but we are an employment program to help you get back working. So, um, and then of course at the end, some Q&A. The VRD mission is to encourage, promote, and support our veterans with service-connected disabilities with their employment goals. Next slide. So VRE eligibility, um, if you're still on active duty, um, am I eligible for veteran readiness and employment? Um, you have to become a veteran first, but they make a transition. Uh, and the transition is uh, these requirements here. At least one of these must be true to have a 20% or higher pre-discharge disability rating, memorandum rating. And uh, will soon leave the military or are participating in integrated disability um, evaluation system, that's IDES, uh, at one of our um, military bases here uh, at Travis. We have a lovely lady named Jane, and Jane is the one who handles uh, those there. And um, she's usually given the group of people that will be getting out and um, then applying for um, veteran readiness and employment. So there's two ways to go about it. You can get the memorandum rating on your way out, or you can apply as a veteran. So, um, so you have two options there. Next slide. So can I apply after when I'm a veteran? The answer is yes. Um, mostly that's what we see uh, these days. 
is uh, people who are veterans and uh, you may be eligible for VRNE benefits and services. If you're a veteran and you meet all the requirements listed, all of those must be true. You have an honorable or other than honorable discharge uh, and you have a service-connected disability rating of at least 10%. Um, and the initial evaluation determined, you, so at the initial evaluation to determine if you are entitled for services. So eligibility is if you have um, these two things here, honorable or other than honorable discharge and have a service-connected disability rating of at least 10%. That makes you um, eligible. Entitled is a whole nother different bag of worms. So um, when you go through the evaluation, we call them an intake, uh, your counselor will determine whether or not you will be entitled to uh, veteran readiness and employment. Next slide. So VRE services, depending on your needs and goals, services may include a complete evaluation to determine your abilities, skills and interest for employment, because there's one thing we know, and that is uh, if you have an interest in something um, or a passion for something, you're definitely uh, more motivated to, to follow through. Um, like if, you know, somebody came to me and I was like, well, you should be an astronaut. And they're like, wow, I really don't like space. That's not good. Um, so we do uh, a comprehensive um um, to find out what your skills, abilities, sometimes people will want to do the math um, situations and they're not good at math or they want to be an English teacher, but they're not necessarily good at those things. We want to find a happy medium because we know that passion really matters. A vocational counseling and rehabilitation planning for employment services. So again, we're about employment. We're about getting you uh, back working. So if you don't want to go to work, this wouldn't be a place for you to apply. Employment services such as job training, resume, resume development, and other um, <clears throat> work-related support, um, we have all of that here. We have two amazing um, employment coordinators. There's Neoni and Zeferino, and they're just wonderful. They help us um, help you uh, find work. Help finding and keeping a job, including the use of a special employer incentive and job accommodations. Um, if you had been working somewhere before and you want to go back, uh, we can help you with that. And um, there is definitely plenty of incentives uh, and, uh, and job accommodations to, um, to accommodate a, a veteran uh, getting back to work. On the job training, the OJT, apprenticeships and non-paid work experience, which non-paid work experience is kind of a... Um, conundrum there because it's actually a paid work experience. Um, the post-secondary training at a college, vocational, technical, or business school. Our job here is to help you get to that first rung of employment. So we're going to get you what you need, whatever it is, uh, to get you to that first rung of employment, whether it be an associate's degree or whether it be a bachelor's degree. Um, a lot of information right now on the internet about I'm going to go to VRE because I can get a doctorate or I'm going to get a master's degree. Um, those are not our goals. Our goals is to get you back working. So if education is required, we need to we need to work in that favor, right? So post secondary training again, that's vocational, technical, or business school uh, supportive rehabilitation uh, services, including case management, counseling, and medical referrals. So that is something that your counselor will do. Independent living services, uh, if you're unable to work due to the severity of your disabilities, um, you'll have a case manager for that. And we do things like we work with um, people who can modify homes uh, if you need that, wheelchair ramps, things of that nature. And we can definitely um, you know, help you live uh, a more productive life rather than just, um, you know, uh, we don't want to just leave you there, right? We don't we don't want to leave anyone behind. So um, next slide. So the VRD process is the application phase. Right now, I'm going to tell you that unfortunately, that's taking a lot longer than we would like. It's uh, it used to be a short um, process. Uh, we had about 45 days. Right now, because we've had just a major influx of applications, it's taking a lot longer to get people in. 
So you may be thinking, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to school next semester. Then you want to start at least six months in advance by applying. The reason being is because uh, because of the PACT Act that we just recently uh, had, um, we have a larger influx of applications, especially here in California. And so it's taking a little bit longer for us to process and get people through. So um, the application, you can apply for veteran readiness and employment at va.gov. Uh, veterans are scheduled for initial counseling appointments if eligible. So if you come with anything other than what we talked about earlier, uh, like a uh, dishonorable, then um, you, you could apply, but you'll be turned down. Uh, entitlement decision phase if veteran. Uh, vocational rehabilitation counselors, the VRC, will meet with the veteran uh, eligible services members one-on-one. -on -one. Discussion is, uh, discussions and determinations to occur on employment handicap or serious employment handicap, VRNE entitlement criteria. Um, that is uh, what we're looking at overall. Some, um, do they have an employment handicap? Is it hard for them to find work uh, based on the service-connected disabilities? Uh, vocational uh, evaluations are conducted to assess skills, abilities, and interests. Evaluation and planning. Uh, collaborate to identify the most appropriate track of services involving employment and or independent living objectives. Uh, services needed um, are defined. A written plan of service will be developed between you and the counselor. Uh, employment services, ongoing case management to occur a maximum of 18 months. This is after you're done um, with whatever education you've chosen. Then we put you in employment services can include resume development, interview skills, and job placement assistance. Um, for rehabilitation, suitable employment is obtained and maintained for at least 60 days or independent living skills have improved. So that's our uh, criteria for um, if you've gone through the schooling and at the end uh, we found that uh, the work that you're going to do is going to work out for you. And we say that after 60 days. Next slide. So the five tracks for um, VRNE is one, the reemployment track. So if you're working somewhere, uh, you got called away, you're back now and you want to get back into uh, being able to go back to work, we can help you with that. We can talk to uh, an employer and help you get back to, um, to, that, uh, to working with that um, company, if you like. Two, rapid access to employment track. That's where um, we see you for two months. Uh, and we inundate you with lots of stuff from both the EDD and from our voc rehab, or sorry, our educate, our employment coordinators. There's two of them. Um, they have a job club that happens once a week, and they usually know who's hiring and when. And the best part is, is that they get all that information and then they share it with you. So um, the employment through long-term services is a little bit different. If somebody comes to us and they don't have any education at all, we can provide um, some education to get to that, whatever's required for the job um, to, to help you through uh, long-term services. So that's what they mean by that. The self-employment track is a little bit more complicated. Um, it seems like uh, anytime I've ever had somebody come through wanting self-employment, uh, Self-employment is for those who really have severe disabilities and are unable to do um, traditional work. But uh, usually um, I get the question about, uh, will the government be supplying me with money for that? And the answer is no, we don't do the loans. Uh, that would go through, I believe, um, uh, uh, CalVet uh, probably handles a lot more of that than we do. Um, so then the independent living track is exactly what it is. It's independent living. It's so that you um, have some ability to live independently. Um, so next slide. So the reemployment track designed for individuals separating from active duty, National Guard or reserves to provide the services necessary for the individual to return to work in the job held prior to entering active duty. They may include consultation with your employer, job accommodations and modifications. So those are something that we can provide, job accommodations and modifications. 
um, on the job so that you can go back if you have a physical disability, um, we can provide some of those um, modifications that you might need. Coordination with VHA, that's our hospital, right, for services, and reemployment rights um, advice so that, you know, you can get your job. It's in the law that they have to take you back. And so um, we can definitely support with that. And then, of course, case management. Next slide. So rapid access to employment track designed for individuals expressing interest in seeking employment soon after separation or just, you know, I've been sitting at home for the last year. I'd like to go to work so we can help you with that too and have the necessary skills to be competitive in the labor market. Say you were working somewhere before, um, you may not have loved the job, but you want to get back to working and you can, and we'll help you with that. The service include short term training, uh, depending on what's needed. Uh, subsistence allowance, uh, individual employment services, job readiness preparation. Again, we're going to meet with those employment coordinators. They're going to help you with resume development, interviewing skills preparation, and job search assistance. Uh, we make a referral to the Department of Labor for employment um, search assistance. It's actually um, the, the EDD, the uh, Employment Development Department and post-employment follow-up. So we check out, check you to make sure that everything is on, uh, on the right track. Next slide. So employment through long-term services track is designed for individuals requiring specialized training and or education to obtain suitable employment. One of the examples that um, we've been giving uh, for years is if I have a veteran who was doing construction while they were in the military and now they have a bad back, bad knees. Um, we know that over time those don't particularly get better. Um, so if they came in and said, I want to be a nurse, then I have to say no because we can't continually exacerbate those service-connected disabilities. So what we would discuss instead is more of a sedentary position, right? One where, you know, you might not be required to carry anything, but again, it's on a case-by-case -case basis with everyone that comes through the door. Um, some people who have uh, PTSD, uh, we like to know what the triggers are so that we don't put you around, say, gas that, you know, has a or a reminder odor or whatever. And then we encourage you the whole time you're here to definitely work with your uh, medical team, uh, whoever that may be, especially um, therapy and or some physical therapy if needed. So um, these services may include in, uh, apprenticeships, um, internships, on-the-job training, non-paid work experience, which is funny because it's actually paid, college vocational and technical training. I guess non-paid is sometimes not paid, but I think it's paid. College vocational or technical training, purchase of required tuition, fees, books, and supplies, subsistence allowance, uh, personalized case management support, and individual individualized employment services. Uh, one thing to remember about this is um, we can help you with the apprenticeships and the internships, but um, I'm going to tell you that I think most people do really well if um, some people come to us and they already know when I was five, I wanted to be X, Y, Z or whatever. And then there are other people who want to like take a look at what's out there and kind of, you know, narrow it down. That's a there's no right or wrong way. But I've noticed that um, especially with um, internships or apprenticeships, if you look into the company that you want to work for and, you know, get to know the people there, then you have a better chance of, of actually working there. Um, and so I encourage you, it's not just, you know, us that can help you get to that employment. You can also do it yourself too, if that's something you're really interested in. So um, next slide. Self-employment track. Again, um, this is just where we uh, give you um, our knowledge about what it's like to um you know, work for yourself. Uh, it's designed to provide services to veterans who have the necessary job skills to start a business, have limited access to traditional employment, or accommodating work environment due to limitations resulting from a disabling condition. 
Services may include referrals to resources and guidance to assist in development of business plan, analysis of business concept, training in small business operations, marketing and finance, guidance in obtaining adequate resources to implement the business plan. Again, we don't give you money. We're not that part of it. I believe that that is with small business administration is where you get the money from. So just letting you know ahead of time. Uh, next slide, please. The independent living track, again, is so that you can live independently, designed for a veteran who are unable to pursue a vocational goal or seek employment at this time. Uh, you know, things can change. Uh, acquiring assistive uh, technology, independent living skills and training. If we have someone who um, has lost sight or has uh, um, challenges when it comes to um, being able to see, we can have uh, somebody come to your house and help you out with being able to get around and know where things are. Community-based support services, gaining increased access to the community, help in acquiring uh, a volunteer position, and home adaptations to improve independent, uh, independence in activities of daily living. So those are some of the things that um, we can help you with in, uh, in the independent uh, living track. Next slide, please. So VRNE is uh, employment focused. The VRNE program provides employment services in four of the five rehabilitation tracks. Uh, the personalized employment services may include work readiness preparation, resume development and job seeking skills, interviewing skills preparation, employment resources development, job accommodations, job placement assistance, post-employment follow-up, and career counseling and rehabilitation planning. Again, uh, there are other chapters. We're all fully aware of Chapter 33, which is an education program. Um, Veteran readiness and employment is an employment program. So if you're not looking for work, um, probably not the best track for you. Special employer incentives, uh, training costs, uh, VA provided supplies, workplace accommodations, and minimal paperwork to participate. So one of the things that you want to remember is some people, again, go, I wanted to be X, Y, Z when I was five. The rest of us kind of take a look and go, maybe this is what I'd like to do, or maybe this is the company I'd like to work for. That is one thing that you can, you can do on your own too, is, uh, you know, look at the jobs that you may want and then find out what kind of education uh, that is required with those jobs. Next slide. So chapter 33, post 9-11, the 33 is an educational benefit. Uh, you must have served in the military after September 11th, 2001. I know the government's harsh. They really cut you off the day before. You must have served more than 90 days and you must have an honorable discharge to be entitled to that benefit. If you have any questions about chapter 33, uh, you can call the education um, number at 1-888-888. 442-4551, and they really handle everything with chapter 33. Next slide. So veteran readiness and employment. Again, my name is April Paganelli. I'm the veteran success on campus, the VSOC um, at American River College. Um, so I'm also a voc rehab counselor. Uh, I'm located in American River in Sacramento. Best way to get me is to email me because if I'm with a veteran or doing something like this, I don't answer the phone, but uh, I'll be more than happy to get back to you um, with my email. <clears throat> and then my phone number is there too, if you need to do that. And I think the next slide is questions, right? Uh, yeah, that is the next slide, but we're going to hold off on okay. the question until the end. Okay. Uh, but okay. yeah, great, great presentation. Thank you, April, oh, for that thank uh, you. information. No problem. Great. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, like I mentioned, uh, if you guys had any questions for April and like she mentioned earlier, general questions, um, feel free to put those in the Q&A feature of Zoom. We'll get to those after we are done presenting. Um, and April, if you want to go through the Q&A feature right now and if you see some questions that you you know want to answer right off the bat, feel free to do that. Um, Derek, we'll, we'll, we'll still cover those questions during the Q&A part. Um, so that way the whole group gets to know the answer to it. Um, so let's go ahead and move forward. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier, my name is Michael Cisneros. I am with the California Department of Veteran Affairs. Uh, I've been with CalVet for about gone, uh, four years now, going on 
moving up to my fifth year. Um, I work for the California Transition Assistance Program, or CalTAP, and I'm a training coordinator. I'm also a veteran myself. I separated from the Air Force back in 07, went back to school, used my GI Bill, um, and uh, now I'm here. So happy to be here working with veterans, uh, specifically student veterans. Um, so talk a little bit first, just to kind of give you uh, a breakdown of where we fall in the, the chain of command or, or in the ranking structure of um, departments and, and, and services. Um, you can think of the federal VA uh, above us. Uh, basically, April works for the VA. Um, her email address says va.gov at the end of it. Um, Bridget is also a VA employee. Um, and then we have the State Department. So I am California Department of Veteran Affairs. We are the State Department of the VA. Uh, my email address and Derek's email address ends with uh, calvet.ca.gov. Um, so, you know, just kind of giving you an idea of where we fall compared to Bridget and, uh, and um, April. Um, and then we have our county offices. So our county veteran service offices, uh, we usually uh, present with the CVSO representatives, um, but today we're doing something different. I believe uh, Skyline is going to have a uh, webinar coming up next month that focuses on our county veteran service offices and claims and appeals. So uh, feel free to check in with that. But every county in California has an office. Um, these representatives that work at these offices are the ones that actually help our benefit, uh, help our veterans get in touch with our benefits. Um, so whether, whether you're looking for information about the DMV programs um, or you're trying to find out about the CalVet fee waiver, um, you'll start off at the county veteran service offices and you'll speak with those veteran service representatives to get those processes started. And then below the county offices, we have our uh, our um, other programs like the, the Disabled Veterans uh, Association and Source of Plowshares. All right, um, just another look at the umbrella. So uh, if you're looking at the uh, the Federal uh, Veteran Affairs Department, uh, the United States, the Department of Veteran Affairs, I'm so sorry. Um, they have the Veterans Health Administration, the Veterans ben ben Benefits Administration and the National Cemetery Administration all underneath that one umbrella. Um, if you're talking about CalVet, um, as you can see on the, on the right-hand side, there's a list of programs that fall underneath the CalVet umbrella. CalTAP being one of them. We also have a home loans program that's different than the federal VA home loans program. Um, I mentioned uh, something earlier about the CalVet tuition fee waiver. That's going to be for your child dependents. Um, and we also have programs for our uh, minority veterans and our women veterans um, and state cemeteries. So what is CalTAP? CalTAP is a transition assistance pro program that's designed to inform and connect veterans of all eras to their earned state and federal benefits, as well as provide continuous assistance as their needs change over time. And so what we've done is we've developed different pathways that help veterans navigate those benefits um, that they're interested in. So uh, we have an entrepreneurship pathway, an employment pathway, we have an education pathway. There's a core curriculum pathway of um, programs and services and benefits that don't fit into the topics that I just mentioned. And then if you are somebody that does want to work with veterans um, or is um, you know, curious about veteran culture, you could always log on to our website to view our service provider pathway, which talks about uh, you know, building an informed veteran culture and uh, what to look out for when you're dealing with this population. This is our uh, life cycle map. Um, so basically our program uh, is, is designed to uh, assist veterans in each part of their transition from um, the service into civilian life. Um, we're also trying to be there before they uh, before they transition out and also before they join. Um, but as of right now, um, we do have, uh, we focus on, uh, we like to say cradle to grave. Um, so every part of your, of your journey through, uh, you know, joining and separating, aging and dying, we want to be there uh, to help out and, uh, help you find those benefits and services that are available to you at those times of your lives. Um, <clears throat> as of right now, uh, we have focused uh, a lot of our webinars on um, the later half of this chart. Um, so uh, you'll see uh, webinars on our CalVet homepage that focus on you know, claims and compensation, um, our home loans uh, program. Um, if you're trying to go back to school, we talk about education benefits and so, 
um, what we try to uh, to produce with this program, um, we're trying to base it off of this life cycle map. This is your veterans resource book. Um, so I like to say that this book is like gold for veterans. So you probably received an email a couple of days ago that uh, was a reminder for this event. In that email, there was a link for uh, the resource book. Um, you could click on a link. Uh, you could uh, type in a link on your in your browser, or you could uh, scan a QR code. But either way, it would have taken you to a PDF copy of this book. Um, I like to say it's like gold for veterans. So everything that we discuss when it comes to um, your your benefits and services that are available to you can be found in this book, including information about the VRNE program. Um, so check out this book if you get a chance. And it talks about uh, eligibility requirements. It talks about the paperwork that needs to be submitted with it. It'll tell you where you need to actually submit that paperwork. Um, and it also will help you out finding the closest county veteran service office to you. Um, so definitely recommend um, taking a look at it if you get a chance, downloading it, maybe keeping it on your phone or your desktop so you can always take a look at it. If you do want a hard copy of this book, you can always go to your county veteran service office or maybe even your VRC. Your VRC might actually have copies as well, uh, but you can grab a hard copy of this book too. Uh, keep it in your backpack or, or in your personal library. <clears throat> this is what our website looks like, uh, calvet.ca.gov. Um, if you scroll into the middle of the page, you'll find the CalTAP banner. You can click on that banner and that will take you to our Pathways page. Um, and you can find out all that information about the entrepreneurship, education, employment and core curriculum pathways. Um, down at the bottom of the page, you'll find the find local CVSO link. Um, that's gonna take you to a tool that you can use to find the closest one to you. Uh, it'll basically give you uh, a radius that it will search um, and it will find the closest county veteran service offices or VA hospitals uh, or, or um, you know any other VA related services uh, closest to you. And then down at the very bottom, you'll find the PDF uh, link as well for the Veterans Resource Book. Um, so if you go to our calvet.ca.gov, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you see that publication section. The first link will be the, the resource book. All right, so quickly, uh, what are those benefits? This is just a quick little snapshot of what's available through Calvet. Uh, this is through... Um, Calvet, uh, and also we partner with uh, organizations like the DMV and Parks and Recs uh, to offer benefits to our veterans. Uh, there's a tuition fee waiver that's uh, that helps our veteran dependents get into any state-funded school. So that's any CSU, UC, or California Community College. Um, there's a, a veteran's designation on your driver's license. So now you can actually have the word veterans printed on your driver's license. So you don't have to carry around a DD Form 214 in your back pocket anymore. Um, we partnered with the DMV to uh, have a, a motor vehicle registration fee waiver. Um, so as long as you have a 100% disability rating and a disability that affects your mobility, you may be eligible for the benefit. Um, if you like to be outdoors, there's a reduced fishing and hunting license that offered to our veterans and also a state park pass that's offered at no cost. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, we do have a CalVet Home Loans di Division that's different than the Federal VA Home Loans Division. And divisions that uh, work with our minority veterans and our women veterans, uh, they offer advocacy, outreach, and support. Um, pretty much it. Uh, check, take, a, take a look at the Veterans Resource Book to see, you know, what else is out there and how to get in touch with those uh, services. Um, if you want to keep in touch with CalTAP and just kind of know more about what we're doing, um, what webinars or, or live events are coming up, you can always email your non-DOD email address to our CalTAP inbox. It's checked daily. Uh, we'll get your email address and we'll put you on a mailing list so that you get a, uh, a monthly newsletter that explains, you know, the service providers that we, that we will be working with throughout the month and the topic and the webinars that we'll be focusing on as well. Um, you can also register for my CalVet. That's going to be at our, our website. Any web page that you go to on CalVet's website will have a My CalVet uh, registration or login button at the top of the screen. And then check out our social media pages, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, and attend our webinars. So I do have a survey link right here. It's not necessary. There will be a QR code coming up later on in the webinar, too. Um, the survey is just basically to let us know what we did well today and what we could work on in the future. Um, if you have any, um, you know, 
tips or, or comments on, you know, topics that you want us to touch on, feel free to let us know there as well. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on. I believe that's my last slide. So this is my contact information. Um, feel free to email me if you have any questions about Caltab, if you have any questions about those, uh, uh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Uh, if you have any questions about those benefits and services available, um, feel free to email me. And if I can't answer those questions, I could uh, direct you to somebody who can. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to, oh my God, to Kevin, Kevin Graves. Uh, Kevin Graves is the Bay Area link um, and or the local interagency network coordinator. And he's going to come on and explain to you a little bit of how, about how he works with veterans in uh, his region. So when you're ready, Kevin, go ahead. I am ready. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am not don't have my video on because I'm literally in my car uh, on the road today. But uh, there's our first slide. And that uh, shows you that there are eight of us statewide uh, that do outreach for the for CalVet. And that's we're basically the boots on the ground and the liaison between Sacramento and your local regions. Uh, my region happens to be uh, the green region in the Bay Area there. And I have 10 counties that I'm responsible for. So um, a lot of, uh, but I have seven other colleagues throughout the state. So you have, if you happen to live in another area or as you guys do helping vet, uh, fellow veterans out, um, the benefit of reaching out to an individual that's in that particular location is we know the local resources that are available in our regions better than we do in other regions. So um, that's where the map is helpful and where the contact information is helpful. Can I get the next slide, please? So what do we do? We provide uh, outreach. As I said, um, we're kind of the boots on the ground. We try to connect you with your CalVet benefits or um, more than that, we really connect you with those that can provide those benefits. Um, as has been said here uh, a number of times, um, our county veteran service officers are key players. I'll talk a little bit about them later, but um, they do most of the eligibility requirements that we require for our state programs. Um, we, uh, we make referrals to uh, work directly with uh, with establishing service provider networks. I, I just came from a collaborative meeting where there was a group in Santa Clara County of providers that provide veteran benefits within Santa, everything from homelessness to um, Judge Manley was there from the veteran treat, treatment courts. So we are connected with the community and we are here to help you connect with those resources. We do some assist with local emergencies right now. Some of my colleagues in Southern California are working with some veterans that might've lost their home from the uh, massive amounts of rain that they've had down there recently. We work when there's fires, uh, floods, natural disasters, as well as um, when there's uh, civil unrest. We work with uh, people that have been affected by that as long as they are a veteran. And then we provide uh, leadership and advocacy on your behalf. We wanna make sure that leaders within the community understand the benefits of having you veterans living within their community and how it is advantageous to them because of uh, what you bring to the table. Can I get the next slide, please? How do we connect you to the benefits? Well, we, uh, with regards to employment, uh, we partner with our sister agency at the EDD. They have uh, dedicated individuals there that are funded strictly to work with uh, veterans to help you find jobs, help you prepare for job interviews, as well as they have uh, dedicated individuals that look for employers that want to hire veterans and understand the value uh, of what you as veterans bring to the table. Uh, with regards to our state benefits, uh, as I mentioned before, we work closely with our county veteran service offices. Um, I don't know if it was mentioned, but every county in the state of California is legislated to have a county veteran service office and is partially funded by the state. And therefore, uh, everything from college fee waiver to hunting licenses, that eligibility is verified. That that driver's license that Michael talked about, that's verified and uh, and the eligibility requirement is done by your county veteran service office. Then that form goes to the DMV, but all the eligibility happens at that level. And then, of course, we partner with our what I call our big brother, the big VA, um, uh, with regards to both their benefits programs, their cemetery division, as well as um, with their health department. And we help to we provide some guidance with regards to how to wait, weave through that process and get the benefits that you've earned through your service to the federal government. Next slide, please. Oh, that's the last slide. So that's what I do in a nutshell. I know I kind of ran through that really quick, but you guys have been awesome to be here this afternoon. You've gotten a ton of information. Thank you for your time. There's my contact information. That phone number is my work cell phone number. So uh, uh, it doesn't, you don't have to go through any process to get a hold of me. 
if you have any questions or you need any assistance in uh, weaving your way through the provider network, please feel free to give me a call or any of my colleagues uh, a call. Uh, we're listed in that wonderful veteran resource book. With that, I will turn it back over to Michael and thank you guys again for being here. Great. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Um, links are a great resource to have. Uh, so definitely, um, whether you're here in the Bay Area or there in the Bay Area or anywhere else in the state, um, please find your link. Uh, reach out to them for anything that you need. They're a good place to start um, um, with cold calls. So, you know, definitely use them. All right. Uh, so we made it to the question and answers part. Looks like we have a lot of time for questions. Um, and it looks like we do have a few questions in the Q&A already. So I'm going to bring up uh, Derek Rose, who's been managing the uh, questions um, and the chat. Um, I also want to just remind you guys, uh, even though we do have this time for questions, please try to keep your uh, your questions general. Um, we're, we're not going to be able to touch on personal stuff. Um, so if you do have a personal question or if you want personal help, definitely reach out to you know April or anybody else on this list um, who can help you out. So with that, go ahead, Derek. Uh, let us know how everything's going with the questions. Um, yeah, so there's about 13 active questions in there. A lot of them related to April's presentation regarding VR and E. Um, so unfortunately, I, you know, don't have uh, much expertise on all of these questions. But I think uh, since we have our guest uh, speaker April with us, that maybe she can at least maybe guide some of these directions or questions in the right directions, or uh, maybe help facilitate like a follow up um, with the VR and E office or representative. So. Um, <clears throat> Well, I guess for this, maybe I can just read them out loud. Uh, so the rest yeah. of the group. Uh, I got, can... I got it. I got it. Um, okay. I got it, Derek. Hold on one second. Uh, the anonymous sure. attendee, um, the one who said I'm service connected, retiree, 27 years, and an officer with advanced degree. There's a program that could pay for law school. We get that a lot. The answer is no. <laughs> so um, no, but then again, it's going to depend on um some variables so if you want to apply and ask that question you can but typically if you already have yeah. education we prefer that you um we're going to put you into probably um an employment program so our program is not to further your education again it's just to enhance or whatever you already have. So it's about getting people back to work, but it's not like, well, you know, I want to be a doctor. That's nice, but that's not the way uh, vr &E works. We're not about, you know, granting people wishes. We're more about getting people back to work. And if you already have a master's degree or a bachelor's degree in work that you can perform, then that's the route we're going to go for you. Um, for uh, Terry, um, Marini, I want to answer this question because we get it a lot and there is something that I think everyone needs to know and I hope that this part gets recorded. Um, with the PACT Act that has been, you know, brought out, we have had a massive increase of applications. So um, there is no, you know, uh, expediting anything. There, it's not happening these days. It's just not. It's taking a lot longer. Um, Congress knows about it. Uh, the powers that be are very aware of it. Uh, we're not the only ones, um, from what I understand. Uh, Texas is also having the same issue, and so is Southern California. Um, we're doing our best. Uh, we've lost uh, some people. Uh, some people retired and some people left, and we're doing our best to refill those positions as fast as we can. Uh, people have to come on and get trained. It's going to take a while. Um, and then it, just a, a massive amount of applicants coming through our system. I don't think that uh, people were for, prepared for, for what was going to happen. But I can let you know that everyone is aware of it. Uh, it's something we deal with every day as the average counselor is supposed to have a certain amount of, um, of uh, applicants uh, along with um, uh a caseload. Um, we're working double and triple that right now. Uh, so, so I would say that, um, you know, we can take the, uh, the ideas and the complaints and all that, but it's really about you getting to, you know, um, writing to your Congress person about, 
you know, hey, it's taking too long to get in because there really isn't anything we can do about it. I don't make policy. I wish I did because it, it, we get in it with people as fast as we could. It is a process. It's a long process. I think there was uh, another question about, you know, um, it's taking forever to get in. I empathize. I understand that. And the people, the powers that be understand it. And, and we get that question a lot. And we're really sorry that it is taking that long. Um, let's see. The other one was, can BRNC students with temporary summer employment between training semesters, what gaps exist? That's kind of a, a question you want to have with your counselor. Um, it's not necessarily like something, I mean, if you wanted a summer job, you could, you know, find one. I don't, I don't know how hard they are. Uh, we do work with, um, the other, uh, work for warriors also. So that's another resource I understand. Um, so let's see. Um, does VRE pay for the school of choice? And is there, it keeps moving, sorry. And is there, so school of choice? No, but we do have a list of, um, we do have a list of schools that we can, uh, partner with. And so the school that you choose probably if it's, you know, a neighborhood school may not be on that list. I found that pretty much almost every school that people come through, but some of them are approved and some of them are not approved or they lose uh, approval because they haven't done whatever it is they need to do. So that is kind of like a, a conversation you'd have with your counselor. Um, we don't like to say there's a limit, but there is a limit. Um, so like the more expensive the school the less likely that we would send you to a, a school that would cost, you know, an exorbitant amount of money um, versus if you had the opportunity to get the same degree um, at your university or your um, state university. The reason being is because we are, are um, you know, advocates for uh, state uh, for state and government money. We can't just, you know, spend it willy nilly. Um, it's, it's a responsibility on our end to say, you know, this is uh, something that we provide, but it's not random and it's not um, just take the highest bidder. Uh, we do want people to get good educations, but there's no reason why you can't attend a UC or a CSU. Private colleges tend to get a little expensive. Uh, it says, thank you for doing uh, historically, what are some types of careers or vocations that veterans have had good success rates with, with vr &E? I would say, um, I don't know that it's like one or the other. Uh, we do tend to go through like, um, I want to say waves of certain types of things. Like for a long time, everyone wanted to be a graphic artist. And that I, I think is wonderful, but I also believe that uh, two things. One, you got to be willing to be poor because you're not going to make a lot of money out the gate. And the other thing is, um, if you're going to make a lot of money, it's not going to be your first five years, right? So I try to encourage people to think about a steady uh, income when it comes to working, right? Because that's what we want to get you to, not to, you know, random stuff like uh, being a real estate agent. That's an up and down. That's a flow you know, those things are a little bit difficult. So usually I'll pair that with someone being a, um, you know, going into business, like an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree in business, and then have them do that as an extra, because then we know we can find you uh, stable, suitable employment with income. That's what we're looking for for you. Uh, the random stuff, uh, those people who want to be singers or actresses, you know, there are places for that. Los Angeles is a great place if you want to be an actor or actress. Um, New York is a great place if you want to be a model. And uh, hey, I think they have TV shows for those who want to be singers. So do that. Um, so let's move on. What if you're still waiting on a VA rating? Have a DD-214 already separated. How do we start vr &E? without a VA rating? Uh, Bill, um, did you, are you getting out? What if I'm still waiting a VA rating? Uh, oh, you have your DD-214. Um, you need to talk to the people uh, there at your, um, um, well, whoever you got out, Air Force, Army, whoever, uh, they should be handling that for you. Okay. Let's see. 
Okay. Oh, uh, you have to have a rating to apply or at least a memo rating. Okay, and I did get an answer for the lady who asked me about um, it, uh, the question. The question was, hold on one second, I put it in here. I wanted to get a better answer than what I could answer. Uh, where did it go? Uh, here we go. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was denied vr &E and have been given three options to appeal. Is there someone that can help guide me? Um, I asked Nicole uh, Green, who is listening, a wonderful co-worker here. Uh, she said, also, I don't see any options to control my micro video. Oh, she was having problems. Um, one second. I want to answer this correctly. Hold on. Okay. Uh, they can also work with a VSO for guidance on appeals and options. So I guess your letter comes after you are determined not entitled is a pretty detailed. Oh, right. You get a letter. The letter comes in the mail and it should have a lot of detail on it on um, what they're saying that uh, what how they found you not entitled to the program. And that's something that you can take to a VSO, they should be able to help you um, with that. So um, I am unemployed and want to use the vr &E benefit to get a master's in taxation. How can I make a case for my VRC? Um, if you have employment already uh, and, you know, you're going in that direction, um, we don't, there's not a uh, there's not a need to send somebody to get a master's degree if the bachelor's degree will supply uh, work at this time. Um, but I encourage you to apply and um, you can have that conversation with the uh, counselor you, you talk with that day. Uh, let's see. Uh, is being SEH status a lot harder to get approved compared to an EH? Here's something I would like to, to clarify, and this is quite important because um, I've noticed that there's a kind of a trend here. We have different benefits, right? If you're 100% disabled, you get something called dental. Or if you have 60% uh, plus IU, which means that you're, you've told the government you can't work. That's entirely different from vr and &E. vr and &E is not, I have 100%, therefore I get it. It's, it's not that. We're saying eligibility is based on having a service-connected disability. Entitlement is something that has to be determined. So it gets very confusing when, you know, people, because I get it all the time, I have 100%, therefore I get it. No, that's not how that works. Um, that does happen with dental. So it is a little bit confusing, right? Like dental is... If you're 100%, you get it. If you're anything less, if you're 90, 80, you just don't get it unless you know you had trauma to the, to the, um, to your teeth. Um, and and I'm pretty sure there are a couple of others that uh, that might. But for the majority of it, if you don't have 100%, you just don't get it. Um, and and that's not the case with VR and E. VR and E is not. I'm 100%. Therefore, I get. It is uh, based on your service-connected disabilities. You must have at least 10% at the time when you apply. Um, and then uh, it's determined, uh, entitlement is determined by a counselor. So I hope I clarified that one. Um, where can we find the list of schools? You know what? Most schools already know. They already know if they're good to go. I took the career scope exam applying for vr &E and the VR counselor made me retake it again. Okay. Um, was there some reason why you didn't want to take it again? It's not, it's not a bad test. I like it. I think it's a little biased, but I like it. Uh, you have the rating to apply at least. Okay. EH is based the employment handicap is solely on the impacts and limitations of your SCDs and SEH is related to the limitations of your disabilities, but also if there's other circumstances, the result in added barriers to employment, such as housing difficulties, legal issues, et cetera. Thank you, Nicole. Um, so I currently have been approved for a VNRA program. This thing keeps moving around. 
um, the learning program, but I haven't heard from my counselor since January 17th. I'm currently enrolled in school. Should I utilize the remaining time I have with my GI bill? I want to get back. You need to talk to your counselor. So let's cover that while I'm here. Okay. So if you contact your counselor, um, whether it be phone or email or or even if you attempt to text. Some, some uh, use that, some don't. But at least making a phone call and emailing your counselor. You, they have your counselor, because right now, as I said, they're really swamped. There is uh, a multiple uh, amount of um, situations going on. There's training, there's talking to other counselors, there's getting through the day. So there's a lot being asked of your counselor. Um, if you call and you leave a message, or if you email, they have 24 to 48 hours to return any sort of correspondence. If that doesn't happen, then your recourse is to call the office, and I'll supply that number in a minute, I gotta find it. The, the purpose being that your counselor should have some time to respond to you, right? If they're talking to another counselor, we can't just, you know, it's not an operating situation where you're on the, you know, you're just dropping everything. And um, thank you, Nicole. The number, which I will grab and drop in there. She's wonderful, isn't she? What I do without you today. Um, so if I drop it in here, will everyone see it? In the chat. Yeah, you should be able to drop it into the chat and they should be able to download it. Oh, fantastic. So it's 510. 637-6128. That's our Oakland number. You can call and you can say that I contacted my counselor, you know, 24 to 48 hours ahead of time and I still haven't heard from them. Can you please ask them to respond? Um, I don't think any of that is done intentionally. It's just a lot of work and, um, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can here. So, you know, we appreciate those who are being patient. Um, so if VA doesn't give a rating after separation, we are stuck without BNR benefits. There are any benefits until they do? Uh, no, but um, hold on a second. Let's, what, Nicole, you answered that question. What did you answer there? I need to know. Hold on one second. She did answer that one. I'm gonna copy this email address. This one is to our office. It's the email address. If you're trying to contact your um, voc rehab counselor and you can't get a hold of them, here's the message that you would send to chapter 31. Um, this is for our supervisors to get. I'm 100% service connected with 12 months, three days on post 9-11. I begin a two year program in the fall. Is there a program that could help with the last year of my program? Uh, you can apply for voc rehab, but again, it's not about education. It's more about getting you to employment, but I, I would apply if I had a hundred percent. I mean, I would, but, um, that's not, the, I'm trying to make it so that it's very clear about you can have a hundred or you can have 10% and one person with a hundred percent may not get it and the other person with the 10% might. So that's where entitlement um, comes in. The question um, he had, Nicole, was uh, about, um, he got out, I think, without getting uh, a rating from whatever military, it's Bill here, I think, let's see. So yeah, I would DJ, I'd go ahead and apply for that. Um, sorry, they're similar to spouses. Um, is there similar program help with spouses employment? Not that I'm aware of, but you could check with CalVet. They might. Um, so let's see. Uh, so the question was, um, chapter 35 for dependents, right? Chapter 35 for dependents. I believe the veteran has to be 100%, um, disabled and then they'll then they can use it i think if you're 90 you can't use it something like that see again there's another kind of like weird situation to me um david i'm sorry you had to take it again but i kind of like it so i'm sorry 
I'm um, currently being approved for VNA program. I haven't heard from my counselor. So that was, um, we gave you the, how to, how to find them. Um, so if I could find that one again, Bill sent it. I believe it was Bill who said, let me go back. I'm so sorry. Bear with me. Um, he asked the question. Um, about, uh, so I don't think he got, so vr &E is only dependent on having the 10%. So if you're saying that while you were getting out, I would go to, okay, so there's a really good, um, from what I understand, the VA hospitals do have um, people there to help you with claims. So that's who I would reach out to, Bill, is claims, because I think um, if you got out and you didn't get your memorandum or you didn't get, um, the service connected disability, um, um, rating, then, uh, I think you want to start with claims because I think that's where you'd want to go back to, um, claims can be found at hospitals. Um, I know that there's one here at Mather. If you're going into Mather, the straight way, it's going to be to your right, just a little to your right. They're in that hallway. They're in the first left door because I've been there before. So um, so that's uh, one way. Let's see. So uh, should I apply for school before applying to vr and &E? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. Again, um, it's based on... Uh, your service connected disabilities. And um, so you could apply for vr &E, and then if you get accepted, it doesn't mean that you have to instantly use it. You can save it if you like, it's up to you. But um, if you reapply and you're, you might not be found uh, entitled again. So I took the career scope. Currently I have approval. I'm unemployed and want to use vr &E to get my master's. Oh, we covered that. Um, also, I'm currently on one degree plan, but may be interested in another degree plan. Possible to fill the gap additional schooling required to meet qualifications for the new degree. Um, so if you're already going into something and you, so I think you're asking for further education in something else, you know, that's really not our goal. Our goal is to get you to employment. So if when you're done with your education, the first thing we would do is put you into um, job ready services and you would look for a job. Um, that's, uh, that's how, that's how it works. Uh, Bill, I applied for the Arnie three weeks ago and haven't contacted. How long does it take right now? I think anywhere from, I was told three to five, four months. Um, so uh, we are working on it. There's just a lot, like I said, an influx of, of applications. April was mentioned and that would add to the chat RE contact numbers. So an anonymous attendee said they can't see it. Oh, Nicole said it's getting better, maybe two to three months. Cause we're kind of seeing people a little bit sooner. Um, once I get the acceptance of VRE, what will I, the next step, will they contact me? Yes, Derek, they'll contact you. Your, your counselor will contact you and send some information in. Sometimes while you're waiting for your official rating, you'll get what's called a memo rating. Thank you, Nicole Green. Um, and it lists what you probably be rated for. We can see if you have a memo rating and you can apply. Otherwise, you need at least 10% to be eligible. So thank you so much, Nicole. Um, so again, vr &E is really getting people back to work. It's not, you know, we get a lot of requests. Can I, you know, get a doctorate? The answer is no. Um, we don't, it's not about the education. It's about getting the education so that we can get you working. The education program is chapter 33. So um, that was on the... Uh, that was on the slide, but I can type it back in. It's um, the 1-800 number, and that is for chapter 33. Uh, one, two, three, and it is, I've memorized it, 442, 4551. And you can uh, contact them if you'd like to talk uh, further about chapter 33. 
Chapter 33 is the 9-11. Um, so, you know, they cut it off the day before. So there you go. Um, I didn't see any other questions. Derek, do you see any others? No, April, uh, I really do thank you uh, for your time and attention to this. I know this can just kind of get really deep in the weeds and, um, <laughs> you know, just for the sake of time and just kind of out of respect for our audience and everybody else's yeah. time, I just think it would be better to maybe establish a point of contact and then folks can yeah. either reach out to to us, our team, and then we can connect them with you or vice versa, um, just so we can kind of really address these, these questions specifically or get you um, to the right person. So um, I think- yeah, I, I think with that, we can go ahead and turn it back over to Michael um, to maybe kind of transition us. Um, and again, if you guys have questions, please reach out um, and we can talk to you. Uh, we can take all the time needed to talk to you um, after the conclusion. But with that, um, maybe Michael, go ahead and take it take it from here. Yeah. All right. Um, well, thank you guys for uh, sitting and, and, you know, watching us do our thing with this topic. Uh, it's a very important topic to, to people. We get a lot of questions on the program. So appreciate April for being here today. Um, thank you to uh, CCSF and Skyline for uh, allowing us to bring this um, event to you guys. Um, and uh, again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I'll put this page back up. So if you want to take a, a picture of it, uh, just have it with you. Reach out at any time. Um, me and Derek are checking our inboxes daily, so we can definitely direct you to uh, people who can help you out. Uh, again, the survey, uh, it's not necessary, but if you do want to fill it out and just let us know what went well today, uh, let us know, uh, you know, if you had your uh, questions answered or, you know, if there's something else that you want to know more about, uh, feel free to pass that along in the survey. Um, and with that, I want to thank you again for being here. Um, thank you, April. Thank you, Bridget. Hold on, Michael, one second. I just want to um, mention that we do do a once a month um, more comprehensive um, setup of this. And uh, I'm going to get that information for you right now so I can put it in the chat um, so we can pass it on if you like. One yeah. second. We will and April, I was wondering too, I was actually thinking about that. I was also wondering if um, I have um, a version of your individualized roadmap to employment, the VRNE oh. um, chapter 31 kind of green on the top kind of handout. I don't know if I have the most recent one, but I'm happy to try to put that in the chat if that's a helpful resource. When, um, person was asking about like, what are the next steps, right? Like, you know, right, right. Oh, yes. You know what? We do have it. I don't have it on hand right right this um, second, but I can get it for you. If you Sounds want good. I can also try to put it in the chat in the meantime as I track it down. Okay. One second. Let's go get it from Neely. There we go. There we go. Okay, here we go. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. April, I was noticing too, there was a question that was, um, I, mean, I apologize if you answered this already, but should I apply for um, school before, sorry, should I apply for school before applying to VRNE? So, because school happens, you know, like fall, uh, spring, and then summer, 
It's going to depend. So we can't say that for sure you're going to be accepted, you know, um, or that you're going to be entitled to the program. So that decision is really up to you. Kind of like the people I feel really like bad for is that it is taking a long time to get in and they're going, well, you know, I'm going to take my chance on getting accepted or entitled to the program and school starts, you know, X, Y, Z next week or whenever. And so there is kind of that planning, you know, portion, like we don't know if you're going to get, you're going to be entitled. There could be something, um, you know, because everyone's individual, we take everyone on an individual basis, that um, there could be something that you're already, you already have, or you're already doing. And so for that reason, I would say, you know, um, I would plan in advance as best I can. Um, because if this is the case, uh, I think there's chapter 33, and then I don't think there's any much else after that. So I would say that um, if, say, you don't get uh, the entitlement uh, that you'd want to look into uh, plan B, or, you know, like a lot of times um, college can get paid for, but you may not get the subsistence um, allowance or the, the BHA or BAH. So those things are kind of, uh, kind of important um, to remember, right? Like it doesn't mean that you won't get it, but we don't want to jump the gun and say that you are, and then you've waited all this time and you don't get in. So those things are kind of important there. Um, she gave it to me. I copied it and it didn't go. So one second. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm not I'm not this technical, but I'm trying. Nope. I know it's hard to do two things at once to answer questions <laughs> and also attach things in the chat. I can very much appreciate that. Well, I said instead of copy link, I said open link. <laughs> oh, sure. Not to worry. <laughs> Here's the link. And then, yes, I know that's kooky. But it is offered uh, every last Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure I get the time. I think one to two. One to two. That's right. Yep. So, e yes. And folks can reach yeah. out to us individually, too, if they want the, the link and the information, too. Okay. Fantastic. You guys have all been so awesome today. I am so happy that Calvet puts this on and I love the fact that we all kind of, you know, get together and, and look out for our veterans. That's just fantastic. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being That's here. Great. And thanks for, again, thank you Skyline and CCSF for, for having us um, and allowing us to do this. Um, if you guys have any questions, always feel free to reach out to that 1-800 number. Someone like me, Derek, uh, Kevin, or one of the other training coordinators would answer the phones. Um, our CalTap inbox is checked daily. Um, and feel free to surf around our website. Uh, thank you again for being here. And we'll leave the we'll leave the uh, room open for a bit for those of you that want to go through the chat to get those resources. Um, and thank you. We'll see you at the next one. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Definitely helpful. Definitely helpful. I think some of the uh, uh, questions that I know I received was little, they're a little bit more individualized, right? So those are phone calls will be helpful. Phone numbers right. help to provide right. those. So thank you. Definitely. The link in the chat box, though, did not. The link in the chat box of the weekly or the monthly webinar, it like opened up straight to the meeting. Is that the way it's supposed to go yeah. down? Yeah. So um, just know that that will always be, that one's never, ever going to change. But yeah. Nicole also put it in the chat, I believe. Did she? Oh, no, Derek did. Okay. I believe. So it's through WebEx, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, it should. Uh, uh, yes, it should be. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, and then let me pull down his. So yeah, it should work. Um. So also, this is Derek. Um. We had a few questions about um just being able to access this slide information and the video recording. So I just wanted to share that uh, I just posted a copy of this slide deck into that chat, and this recording of this webinar will be posted. Uh, probably on our CalVet YouTube, probably within the next week or so after it goes through all the technical uh, stuff that it needs to go through on our end. Um, but then uh, you'll be able to view it on our CalVet YouTube uh, channel as well as our website. So I just wanted to share that information with everyone. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. 
So I'm thank you. That. Very helpful information. Hey, April, I, I think I have um, a direct yeah. email from Neoni that's hosting the monthly VRNE um, yeah. webinar. He also provided a join by phone option. Do you want me to throw that in the chat? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Thank you for technical people. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, he, he's one of our employment coordinators. The guy's amazing. I always wonder why he's still with us. He's a genius. I, don't, I just don't know how, why we're so lucky to have him. He is, he's, he's a fantastic guy. So thank you all so much. This has been wonderful. I, I love that, uh, other people want to get out the information too. Sometimes our information changes. So we'll do another one of these, you know, whenever you guys are ready. And then we can also look at the, um, the one that occurs once a month just in case there's changes. Sounds good. Thank you guys. Well, we'll log off from here, but so long from City College San Francisco, appreciate it. We had a you know room full of uh, attendees and I think they got some good info about it. And I'm glad we had a lot of online register, a lot of people that joined online as well, a lot of good questions. So it's great. All right, guys, we'll take care. Have a good uh, Thursday and good four day, four day break. You too, Brian. Right. Always good seeing you. Okay. okay. Okay, guys, yep. see you. And it does look like there are some additional questions in the chat. So I think, um, I don't know if it would be helpful to um, answer those. It looks like April, they might've dropped off, um, but happy to, I would say, you know, if folks do have individual questions, um, April indicated that she's happy to have folks reach out to her individually via email um, or phone to answer those. Yeah, thanks so much for showing the... Uh, <laughs> For those for those of you that didn't get your um, questions looked at, feel free to reach out. Um, that's our email address or phone number. And like I said, um, any of the other presenters can help as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we can always reach out to our colleagues at the VRNE program through our San Francisco VA Student Veteran Health Program and ask them to check on perhaps the status of an application or if you're having trouble getting a hold of a counselor. Um, we're also happy to kind of put a word in because we do, even though we're a different branch of the VA and the Veterans Health Administration, we do share the same team's <laughs> messaging system. So we can very quickly reach out to um, our VRNE colleagues and look Lauren and I and Gina from Skyline have done that quite often where uh, we wanted to try to coordinate care um, and make sure folks are getting the answers that they need. Okay. Uh, looks like um, right back at the, at the end, uh, looks questions that didn't get answered, feel free to reach out. Um, We'll leave the room open again for maybe another five more minutes just to, for those of you that want to get those links and resources. Um, and we'll see you guys at the next one. Thank you. Thank you again to uh, Lauren and Bridget uh, and your team as well. Always a pleasure working with you. Always appreciate your partnership on these events. So thank you again. Yeah, thank you for hosting or, you know, setting this up and um, yeah, and for sharing all the contact uh, slides, cause that's very helpful. I know I have a few students that couldn't make it today and they'll rewatch this recording and then probably send a few questions to April directly. So I appreciate this. I'm gonna uh, log off, but thank you from Skyline College. And it was great, amazing information. And uh, till our next uh, webinar next month. All right. Thank you all. <laughs> all right, bye. All.